Hey, it's Joe here from Living to Learn. Just up in the Living to Learn Creative Design Studios. It's a wet and windy Tuesday, and I, I decided to stay at home and pack for an upcoming camp that's coming up this weekend and get some kit together and get it all ready. And one thing I've re always wanted to do is make a axe mask or a shoulder protector for for my axes. My brother showed me how to do it in Marketplace. And then I seen a video by Guy Wilmot on how he wrapped his more Eldris. And I thought to myself, hey, I, could, I could give that a bash. It was a very informative video. So I'm going to give this a go, but I'm not a, I'm not a, a paracord-y kind of guy. I, I do like paracord for certain things, but I'm a bank line man. So I'm going to give it a go with some bank line. So I'm going to pause the video and we'll get a kind of in-lap shot and then um, we'll, uh, we'll talk through it. So we're back. This is the, my Grand Sword Small Forest X. I'd, I'd recommend leaving the mask on if you have a mask or even just taping up the edge because you are going to have to work in front of it. Don't let the mask fool you, my blade stops about here. So, but I'm gonna, I've had a couple of overstrikes up here, so I'm gonna try and protect it and work away down with a good chunk of bank line. So, some people cut it, I don't. I have a spool over here, I prefer to leave it on the spool because I usually, I used to cut like four or five arm lengths, and what I found would happen is I'd always run out, I wouldn't have enough to do what I'd, I needed to do. But you just want to make a, a simple loop, kind of like the way you would start a hangman's. Um, noose or how you would just start a noose and pick your desired length I want to come fairly far down here because I always double grip the handle so I'm going to try for about here there like so and what you do is you leave a bit up here so you can pull on this later on and you want to work over your tread keeping it nice and neat doesn't have to be incredibly tight, but just enough to keep things where they need to be. So you can adjust it up and down. Because this does cinch as you go on. Try and keep everything center. Now, this seems to be a fairly common practice, but there's an awful lot of new guys out there and they might want to give this a bash. And it seemed like a very daunting thing. Like it, the, having to watch the paracord wizards do their stuff but once I seen a couple of videos on it I thought I'd give it a bash and it is a lot easier than I originally thought so here we go I'm just trying to keep it nice and neat putting a bit of tension on it as I go so I'm going to continue on down to the end and I'll join or you can join me then when I get back hey so here we go it's about 30 minutes later and I've got it completely wrapped in um, bank line. So you have your tail end here with your loop and you got your, your kind of loose end up here. So I'm just going to, I'm happy enough with that length, I'm just going to cut it off the spool. You want to leave yourself as much length as possible just in case you have to work with it. Now here, bar the aesthetics of it, it does look very nice. It is a protective covering for your axe. You can use paracord, and it's a lot easier with paracord because it's bigger, it's wider, and you can move down. Or you could take the really easy option and make a leather mask. Find some leather from an old sofa or some really nice leather if you pop into um, furniture stores. Most of them will be happy to, to give you scraps of leather or swatches of leather that they don't use anymore. And just make a leather mask. It's also very nice, more leather collar, if you want to go down that road. But once you have it done, you take your... Your end that you separated from the row, and you just push it through this loop here, making sure everything's nice and neat. So you're left with something like that. You're gonna need a multi-tool for up top here. And once you have that done, you just simply pull, and you will get her to come up under your knot. You want to get it up there about an inch. I prefer to have about half an inch, an inch and a bit up. Here we go. You can cut off your excess up top. Now, I've, some people like to go snug, but this is a working axe, and I prefer to do that way. It doesn't have to be pretty; it just has to work. Now that is bed on there, tight, and is not 
coming off. I've trimmed my tail off up here and you can see this bit is a bit loose. But again, it's a working axe. I don't need it to be perfect. Now, what I see some people do, because they want it to be nice and neat and pretty, and that's fine, is they cut this end off. I personally don't cut this end off. I might trim it back up a bit, but I like to leave enough length so that I can get at it with a pliers or a multi-tool because most people who, who do it use it for like, oh, it's emergency cordage and it's extra cordage and you end up cutting this off so much that it goes up in here and you can't get it back undone. Whereas if you leave a bit of length down the bottom here, I'm not going to do it now because it's have to take me half an hour to wrap this, but if you just pull on this and pull in this direction, that knot comes back down, you can pop it open and you got yourself 25 feet of cord if you need it. So I'm just going to trim it up a little bit. No, I should do it. Perfecto. And like I said, this is a working bushcraft axe, so it doesn't bother me. It doesn't have to be pretty. It costs me all of nothing to make. And I can just grip this and pull it on. So there you go. Nice bank line. Axe or shoulder protector or over strike protector wrap. On a wet rainy day. I'd like, if any of you guys try and attempt it, I'd love to see it. It's a nice way to pass some time. You end up with a, with a nice nice bit of bushcraftness <laughs> at the end of it. All right, guys. Joe from Living the Learn. Out.